Sweat, sweat Equity Podcast, number one. <clears throat> I said go. Oh my god. I'm going, I'm going. Ugh. Number one. Dude, your fart before this was so bad. It's still here. Like the gnarly, like. Narnar? Number one arbitrated comedy business podcast <laughs> out in the land. There's 900 million podcasts out there, and you choose to listen to this one. So we thank you for that. Uh, if you want to do us a favor and you don't want to hit up the ads I'm about to read out, you can go on Apple iTunes or Spotify. Give us a raking or review. Five stars is always the best. Uh, leave a little phrase. We'll try to read it out on the podcast. We've got 65 reviews on iTunes, Apple Podcasts. We can do better than that. We've been around for about five years. Yeah. So uh, if you don't want to do that and you want to support this show, how about checking out our headline sponsor? Give me money. Which is FreshBooks. Uh, if I can bring up gofreshbooks.com forward slash sweat. Gets you, uh, gets you a 30-day free trial on your annual plan. That's gofreshbooks.com forward slash sweat. Or is it try FreshBooks? Jesus, is this your first day here? <laughs> I can't find my... I actually stopped myself from busting your balls earlier. And now go, you FreshBooks. serve it right up. Oh, my God, up, man. I can not pull up my, uh, my rundown. I got it. I got it. Let it Whoa. keep it in. People like hearing the errors. Uh, it's yeah. go. Fresh, <laughs> it's, it's staying in. It's gofreshbooks.com forward slash sweat. Get a three day free trial. Get direct deposits the next day. Unlike the competitors like Zero or QuickBooks. Gofreshbooks.com forward slash sweat. I'm not only a, a, a promoter, I'm also a user. That's right. gofreshbooks.com forward slash sweat. And that hooks us up as well on this show. Our feature sponsors, ExpressVPN, try expressvpn.com forward slash sweat. Get you three months off of an annual plan. Don't let people know what you're searching on the internet. Yeah, it's not their business. It's, it's, no, I have a it's drop, the business kind of podcast. That says that. Nice. We're both. It's hit. not your job to That's make it too Wow. Well. Uh, we're both it was firing. Lou Brown. We're both it's firing fine. hot. Uh, fine, man. Roan, the fanciest of fancy. <laughs> Financial District uh, Under Armour Wear. Yeah. Try Roan.com forward slash sweat. Gives you 20% off using that link. Or use the promo code BRIDGE20 to look fancy, to be a step above everybody else at the gym. Uh, Is that what the copy says? They don't tell no, you to say no, look fancy. That. No, I, we've never. They're way cooler than that. I, we've never used the copy they've given us oh, for good. any ad. That's why we crush it. That's why we're number one. <laughs> That's why you needed your rundown yeah. to not read it. Yeah, Grasshopper. Try yeah. grasshopper.com forward slash sweat. Gets you $75 off an annual plan for a business phone line. Don't have a Google voice line for your side hustle or your, your business. Try grasshopper.com forward slash sweat. Gets you 75 bucks. And honestly, that's the best sponsor we have for oh, this yeah. show. Because it hooks us up a lot better. hooks you up a lot better. And then lastly, Warby Parker. WarbyParkerTrial.com forward slash sweat. Gets you five free pairs to try on at home at no cost. You can send your, your prescription in. You can get your sunglasses, eyeglasses, all that done. And look, you're paying a lot more. You go to Lens Crafters. You go to all those fancy places that you think are, you're saving a lot of money. You're not. Let's get this show started. Hot it done it. What about my sweat equity? Sweat equity. How do you wear nice stuff and feel comfortable? You know, it's um, a question of uh, looks versus sensation, and I think sensation is more important. God, it's like you came prepped. Prep for one-liners. Are we recording? That was the best bullshit answer I've ever said. Eric's face is great. I'm trying. So- I'm trying to understand sensation of feeling good or like touching your skin. If you say feeling- confidently, it doesn't matter. That's it's crazy. right. And I, did, I almost didn't say something. I was like, no, that's. I would want to sound stupid. You, you see what a little jacket and hair gel can do. I'm- I know. I'm totally out of. I'm like, what do I say to that? So smart with that jacket. Well, and you've got and you've got a setting too. It's not just it's not just that you have an ambiance. It's and like a you, digital fireplace. You've been places like it. it okay, that's a, that's a surprises for you boys too. There's a so, stack of books you've read before. Tallest stack of books I've ever seen. Yeah, it's a uh, you know books. They still make them. I understand. I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I've I've been getting back into them recently. 
Are we? Uh, are we've been we've been recording, okay, but we're not allowed to start. No, I mean, no, I, I keep cold. it in. Keep all that stuff in. We didn't say anything. No, not yet. I've watched a, a lot of your guys' shows, and I, I never know what to wear because you know sometimes you're shirtless, right? <laughs> well, we're trying That's, to yeah. We're trying to get the double income, no kids crowd, you know. Right. Sometimes the podcast <laughs> turns into a podcast. You know, I, I get it. Looking yeah. good. But, sometimes we're trying to single get single dads. Now. <laughs> yeah, sometimes we're trying to get the white trash moms. You never know what'll come. Maybe we can pull some Chum the waters. Pull, pull them away from those like murder podcasts and get some of that action, you know? <laughs> you had me at sweat equity. <laughs> there you go. It's the it's the titular uh line to what we're doing. But uh I'm glad to get you on. We've been trying to get you on, figure this out for like a year, man. And your schedule's busier than ours combined, I think. And then there was that little COVID thing and uh and everybody lost their mind. Yeah. Well, which is why you're not in studio for one reason, you know, or, or we're we're kind of in a, in a bit of a makeshift studio right now because it's like, what's the point of having a studio if we can't really get people? Yeah, that's why. <laughs> that's one. That's reason. why. Wait a, that's wait a yes darn and coronavirus. That. Wait a yes and that. I'm saying, but even if we, ha- I thought about it. Even if we 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 do want our own studio outside of uh, Eric's uh, party house, but uh, you know, outside of that. I don't think we could get people to come in anyway. So it's like, what what would be the point right now until COVID? Well, I have to tell you, it's, it's a little bit, I, I feel a little bit naked and exposed because you guys have these big, beautiful microphones hiding half your face. And I really, it's hard for me to judge your reaction to anything I say. Oh, that's poor on our part. I pulled it's mine down. Almost as difficult to judge reactions as wearing this. It's a good point. David has so, put on a mask. Yeah, for the if, audio. For the there. audio listeners out there. Let me is, ask you this, since this is a, a marketing uh, podcast. What do you think of putting your brand on a mask? I'll, I'll let you guys answer first because I have some ideas on that. Well, I saw a comedian, Annie Letterman. Uh, she made merch out of it. Uh, one of my favorite things. Were, uh, I don't want you to get offended, but she did uh, this, and Eric can, can describe it, but that symbol. Which, you got to make me describe yeah. the pussy licking finger I thing. I had to okay, do it. Great. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, I had to say it. Right. Yeah, I know. Icky. But I'm saying, I'm saying. I didn't want to. She took it negative and made it a positive. With every bad, there's a good, right? I figure if if everybody's going to have to wear one, why not? It's one of those things. I don't see myself buying a branded mask. I have literally cut sleeves off of shirts and put them on my face. Which is ineffective, but yep. Yeah, it's not, I know. It's not I'm not quite saying it's N95 quality. I'm just saying, like, I don't care to to buy a branded mask. But at the same time, you know. What about the matchy-matchy? I saw someone yesterday uh, whose sh- her mask matched his shirt. It was the same fabric. That's and too was, far. Oh, that's that that that's the like couple crossing that's crossing over. OK, yeah, that's, that's the couple that sits on the same side of the table as each other, you know. At well, the diner, that's just you that's sit across crossing, from each other. That's just too far. The that, matching clothes that it has nothing to do if with. If Eric a mask. and I were dating, that's the exact same thing. If I put my hand in the back of one of his butt pockets, you ever see that move while you're walking? I'd do it too, though. That's a, a, a that's a big and pocket. tough to walk. It looks like a three legged race. Yeah, it looks you guys nice. want to get romantic? I'll just play a little music underneath you. Oh, we didn't know there's nice. we didn't know there's a piano or keyboard right there. <laughs> I don't know. Can you actually play? or is... it, It's not coming through on our end. <laughs> what? It, it sounded like uh, almost like a Tom Green intro. Like, Well, it was. It was, it was romantic date music. <laughs> uh, I think you gotta, you got to plug that sucker into your computer. Right now. <laughs> it's definitely not the best audio quality. It does, it's, yeah, you got to hardline that mother that mother in there. Well, you guys, like, all of a sudden you have Mike in because you've got these big, you know, bad boys. Big, big phalluses. Look, we're a, dick sh- we're a dick joke podcast number one, business number two. So We don't hide it at don't all. That? We should. What's on your mind, fellas? Why, why are we talking? Talk well, to me. I want to uh, – more thoughts on the, on the mask. I think – I, I honestly think at this point, Americans like being branded. I, they like having a brand on their clothing that represents who they are, even if it's a little one. Actually, the smaller – if it's a pattern, that's more the female side of it, like a Louis Vuitton. But uh, I do think wearing a Nike check, wearing a, a Under Armour or Adidas, 
you know, when you're a young guy, that that's kind of a personality, sadly. Exactly. <laughs> it's like a lazy, almost a lazy way to demonstrate who you are as a person to somebody. Well, Eric, in my I, opinion, what's on your shirt, Eric? I can't see it. I see there's something. Okay, there. so my shirt says Knuckle Uncle, and it's a shirt that I made that I thought would be a funny band name. And then I came up with the little logo because I thought that'd be funny too. And it's a uh, hand doing the shocker, so that does indeed demonstrate who I am as a person. And I made the shirt, so actually I'm in pretty good shape on this one. But normally I'm dressed like Law with nothing. Oh, it's like plain shirt, plain whatever. Like yeah. I'm, I'm, I uh, rarely have anything on my. And I look, I used person. to, I used to make a lot of my own T-shirts like that too. Uh, not as graphic. Because I'd like to wear them out, but what? I think I think there's some something to be said about putting that originality somewhere, putting that joke somewhere, or just uh, putting some kind of creative effort into. T-shirts are easy to make now, but uh, well, I got one, I got one shirt with writing on it, and it's an NPR. It says NPR on it, right? Because I, I gave them a dollar and they gave me a shirt. <clears throat> and I've been wearing it, and one day my dad asked me, "What, what is the shirt? What's the shirt about?" I'm like, "Well, he goes." And he, I, this is true. He goes, Newport Richie. Yeah. What are you advertising that for? <laughs> That's good. I like it. That is a very Tampa centric joke. Yeah. Because I think I think Newport Richie all the time when I see it, especially here. Uh, I think Terry NPR Gross, down. my girl. Who, by the way, did you know Terry Gross does all her interviews like this? She doesn't do any of them in person. So for thirty years. They've been doing so much good audio cutting. Like, the, apparently, when you're the guest on Terry Gross's show on NPR, Fresh Air, uh, you go in, you go into a booth, and she talks to you just like this for like as long as video conference has been going on. Oh, from her house? And they just cut down the ums and ahs and, and all that. And that, that explains so much of what I don't like about those interviews. <laughs> Well, look, there's they seem a, so fake. There's a know? cadence, but she she kind of created that cadence that she kind of made the MP, everybody kind of followed her. I thought it's very horsey. It's very cloppity. It's very it lacks it it's lacks. A, don't get me wrong. I love me some Terry Gross. I think she's brilliant, but I think those interviews are so awkward, and that explains why to me because they aren't looking each other in the eye or something. I don't know what's going. on. Yeah, it, it, may, it might have been just audio for a while until she just added, like, a video element recently. But I, I know I've heard comedians on other podcasts talk about going in to, to do her show. And she lives in, like, Philadelphia or something. You think – you go to, like, the New York studios and she's in Philadelphia. I don't know. I think that's going to change a lot of stuff, all the COVID stuff, how we're doing this. Like, for whatever reason, it's better if you were here uh, in person, obviously. But – at the same time, it doesn't – the cost-benefit, even just driving across the bay over here in the, the Tampa Bay metropolis is still a pain in the ass. And it's like – but there is something to be said that there – an ISDN line or something that you can have these teleconferences where you're not missing a step, you know. Yeah. Every, it's nobody, a half second. Most people are not technologically uh, where we are on our side, and that makes it tough. You know, we, we forget to tell the guests before – Maybe have headphones, have if you have a better microphone, use it, that sort of thing. But it's yeah. also kind of being forgiven too. Like I think a lot of people are just kind of used to, well, that's what it sounds like. And I mean two two things. One is, okay, I just want to tie this up and neat knot and leave it in the past. And I can like Terry Gross without being a fan of the show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No one's gonna uh, no one's gonna cancel you. Secondly, I, I don't want to get Adam Driver out of the conversation here. Oh, I mean, nice. Adam it's I, Adam Driven. <laughs> The, but the you know the um, the second part is that I think if anyone's if any anything is more demonstrative of people's willingness to forgive technical uh, inexpertise was the first two months almost felt like two years of the late night talk shows. I was so yeah. disappointed in there. To this day, I think Trevor Noah is going to hit his head on the corner of that shelf behind him. It makes me a little bit crazy because I'm a little OCD about those things, and. Just the the whole the joke that there's no audience. It ended very quickly, and no one told them. Right. And they kept playing the joke that there was no one there to laugh, and then it becomes not funny or macabre, but just kind of sad. 
Yeah. I yeah. mean, uh, we, I don't, I can, I can speak for myself, but I'm pretty sure Eric and I have not watched either of any late night show. I, I've seen, I've watched Conan O'Brien do a bunch of, you know, because he's able to now do 20 minute long form interviews that they put on YouTube that you're not used to being able to see, you know, him and Gaffigan go back and forth for 20 minutes. But there's definitely a tone of like, they're not used to that. Right. I know Conan has a podcast. I've never listened to it, but like, it's pretty good. The way they're doing it is just, it seems like everybody was set to zero with it. But he has his name, but everything else seems like they've never done it before. R- really tough it's, to go from five minute interviews to, you know, long form, yeah. 20 minute. It but I, I think it also exposed kind of a fall line and that's common among a, a lot of those late night hosts is that they're comics. They need the crack that is audience approval. Yeah. They need that laughter. Without it, they were only halfway there. And some of them got a little bitchy about it, quite frankly, sure. and unpleasant to watch because it just became not fun to watch them. They were bitter. Yeah, yeah, that happens. I mean, you get so used to a reaction uh, for so long. I, I get it on a micro scale, like, uh, you know, not doing stand-up for a while. I've been saying it on this show not being able to get up as much as you want. I find myself trying to be funny and I'm trying to force it in, in human interactions. I'm having on the phone or like, you know, the rare meetup with anybody in person. And it's like, Oh, this is a, this is me being needy. This is, you know, this is me forcing that into conversation. Right. But does, does Eric still think you're funny? So <laughs> Eric's never thought I've funny. never worked. So, <laughs> So waiting for that. We're still keeping that shirt of a drop. He's, he's like Cal Ripken with me not being funny. He's, he's keeping that streak alive. What about children? They think you're funny? Uh, when they stomp on my nuts when I'm asleep, yeah. We're, I mean, they're four. That's when I think you're funny. Yeah. They're, they're, that reaction's great. They're four and three. I mean, we're like, oh, I'm really hurt for real. When dad's hurt, that's that's the best, which okay. really right. reminds you that, you know, physical humor still. It's a trope. It, it can still be very funny. Um, I catch myself getting mad about it and laugh. Then I laugh. But, yep. you know, I, I'd like to keep my, my jubblies. Uh, in order. Well, you know, that's, thanks for sharing. Testicle, I, I, you know, what is it? Contortion? Or oh, wait, that's a bruise. It's a testicular torsion. Torsion, yeah. When they twist, I'm not down with that. That's a real thing. Whew. Yeah. Happened to a buddy of my mind, of, of my mind, of mine, uh, on, he was driving on I-75 and had to pull over and barf. It hurt him so bad. Oh, God. Yeah. It happened while he was sitting there driving? Yeah, he had done it and, like, got in the car and, like, what do you mean? sat wrong. I, he Did he jump in the car like Bo Duke or something? No, it wasn't from that. It had already happened. He sat weird and it got worse and it hurt him. Bo Duke so reference. Dude, you are dating yourself. Hey, man, that was, I, that was a pretty Might good pull well for be. me. Yeah, I should date myself. I do so, date myself. So... Talk to me more about like you know what what's good right now from a from a marketing or advertising perspective. What do you think is going well? What do you think has come out of the woodwork as something good in this period we're in? Is there anything good? I think we're gonna have to have some time to get away from it to really understand it. I think just like uh, Lou C.K. kind of talked about the '09 recession, and I know he's a bad word in a lot of people's heads, but he he is very good at kind of giving a broad analysis and a dumb in a smart, dumb guy kind of way. And I, what he said was like, maybe this is a good thing. Maybe it is a good thing. I kind of, the more I look at it, maybe it's a good thing to really see what we all need. And that's what he was saying in the 09 recession or 08, whatever you want to call it. Um, Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe we're all realizing, you know, we take things for granted that we shouldn't. I don't in, know. in a bigger, in a bigger philosophical way, but we're, we got to have some time away from it to really make that analysis for marketing. Oh, I mean, I'm not just sticking to marketing. I want to go broad, and then I can focus on marketing. Uh, I'm just saying marketing-wise. The marketing is painful, in my opinion. It's just. Well, budgets get cut. You know this better than both of us combined. I mean, not, not, not to give your age or anything, but you're, you're, you're seasoned, more seasoned vet than us in, in the branding marketing world. And, uh, it's the jack. I'm actually your age. I just look <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That's what it does. I need to go get my Skymark on. Um, but I'm saying – you know, uh, you've been you've been in bigger boardrooms than I have, or bigger discussions with bigger businesses than I have, or Eric has. As far as a lot of people just don't even know how to budget marketing. So right there, that's where my head goes because a lot of talks I'm getting are, 
you know, I'm talking about a lot of manufacturers right now. I'm talking to a lot of B2B and supply chain stuff. And it's, you know, they, before COVID, they didn't really have a budget set out or a plan. And now anybody I'm talking to really doesn't. And it's really, it, I always say it's not a line item that can be cut. It's a percentage. It's always a hard percentage, whatever that is. And it, that percentage should go towards whatever you're, you, you give it towards uh, against your gross revenue. Sure, I know, but I, I think my but what I was trying to get from you, and I, I know you go around the back to come back all the way through the front door yeah. on this. But oh yeah, that's what I'm doing for. Is from a messaging or they or call me the reach around strategist. Uh, from a practical point of view, you know, because I'm looking on a daily basis. <laughs> Fine, I, I laugh. That was pretty good. I got Eric to laugh. He tried to hold it in like a poker hand that he had. He had anyway, this is my jacket because this is a conversation that does not have. <laughs> <laughs> look at that i just dropped 10 years show oh, um our age so here's but but here's here's my my question my, my larger question the point is you know tell me to, i'm, I'm going to hold you both to the wall on this because I've, I've got an answer too but i, I want to know what do you think is going right in marketing or advertising or something very concrete you, you know what you say hey this is good this is interesting here's an opportunity T tell me on the on the upside well, something well from what I've seen, the stuff that frustrates me is the stuff that they react, overreact. They they do do and say things. They tell you in terms of like wearing a mask, do this and that, and you have all a lot of disinformation. So anytime I see something that takes a step back and says, "Hey, maybe just try being nice to somebody," we're and all let's in this try, together. Yeah, let's try and like you know, come together with this stuff. Let's stop, you know, deciding that it's going to be a battle against between people rather than against the virus, because that's inevitably what everything is becoming right now. And it's really just anything that doesn't divide people up is, is better than what I've seen. Well, not we're in a confluence with the a black lives matter movement too. And that, I'm not even saying, but that that has it, you can't keep them apart the, almost because they're both. One really has. We to, should try to. We should. We should compartmentalize. I'm saying you and I in the, in this conversation, we should. I, we've always known Black Lives Matter. Uh, that that it's the weird thing of like, you're hitting a broad audience with a message, and it's like it's usually the fringes that aren't into it, you know. Um, but as far as what I I think, I'll try to piggyback on what Eric was saying. That, being disingenuous with a message and trying to come out with something that says like, Hey, we're all in this together, you know, by sprint or like Pepsi really believes in the message of let's all get through this. I, it feels disingenuous and has a negative effect. Well, it, come on, man. I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm trying to nail, nail jello to a fence here. Uh, Coca-Cola really didn't want to teach the world to sing in perfect. Yeah. Term. Yeah. That's okay. Cool. I'm saying it's not changed. I'm saying from a nuts it's callous, point, though, is what I'm saying. It, it's it, most marketing is callous, right? Right, but even this is like even more a front. You know, this is like, hey, it we're is. really going to be opportunist here, uh, and we're going to be on the right. I hear a lot of right side of history kind of talk, whether personal or business wise, and it's like. Yeah, but some of y'all still don't know what side that is. Right, that's what I'm saying though. It's like, why are we? What? Are, what sides are we taking here? Is what I'm like. Why are? We, what's that? Always taking sides. We're and we're recording this under the gun of. Uh, I I didn't even know this till we we just started the pod, which was the RNCs tonight. I guess the DNCs tonight. Um, and thankfully, I live out of watching any uh, mainstream news. And DNC was last week. The RNCs tonight. Yeah, they don't matter in my life at all. That's the thing, you know, like... Clearly, you, they don't matter because you don't know they're both not happening. <laughs> right, right, yeah. I was hoping but, you would correct me if I was wrong. Wow, this is, you, you got, this is an interesting little bunch here. Let me, let me, let me push something We've been off. lied to too I was long. pretty sure the DNC already happened, but I didn't generation, care enough to argue. But, all right, we're both in mid-30s. You get lied to so much, and you're just like, well, what's the point? Why pay attention? And I think a lot more people are going to bow out until they get older, like a lot of the older generation that is way more buying into it, which is crazy. It's scary. But when you're talking about it, what is the it there? And like mass, like mass media, a lot of uh, major journalism, 
quote unquote that you know they make their own shit stirring pot amen um they're their own human caterpillar we're going back for a minute to the question i was trying to, uh, uh start a little something on and i tried unsuccessfully maybe twice we interview you bro you don't interview us you can't hijack it <laughs> it's a back and forth though i know um, but the, the thing you and I talked about in advance was, you know, I, I do a lot of hospitality, those tourism marketing, a lot of destination marketing. And in a, in a situation where the only thing you need right now is for people to move, you, you need them to come visit you. You can't export your product if your product is, let's say, the beaches or your product is yep. Disney or New York City or in a certain name of thing, right? So the larger space that I'm working in on a, you know, a, a more kind of a 30,000 foot level is what is that industry doing and what are other industries doing in response to this stasis, this holding pattern we find ourselves in. And one of the things that drives me a little bit crazy is every destination in the world right now wants to show you what six feet is, right? And they have all these cute little ways to show you what six feet is. There's a this, there's a that. It's a, you know, and it's just like, it's not that people don't know what six feet is. It's they don't care right now. Yeah. There's a whole second level of conversation happening around that. And A and B, most destination marketers or marketing was never meant to describe six feet to visitors, right? Yeah. So at best, it's hand fisted. You know, at worst, it sounds like a CDC warning or or whistling near the cemetery or all this bizarre stuff going on. And where I think where they're missing the boat is just go back to remind people about the things that made your brand, that made you love them to begin with. You know, don't do all of this crazy, crazy Ivan. You you uh, you get the reference. Was it Hunter Red October when the guy does a crazy Ivan? He goes, from here. anyway, eye for an eye. That's all I got. Yeah. But the point being, I, I noticed that in a lot of desti- almost all destination marketing, they get off message and they go through a message because they think they're experts in uh, communicating uh, information about CDC. And I think that's I think it's a mistake by destiny. Right. Because it's a, it's kind of it's left so broad because the CDC can't very they can't be super specific uh, for whatever reason. They have to make their their position very broad. I don't get that. But. Uh, then you then it's left to interpretation. Then you know, as you get hired as a hired gun, you're gonna figure out how to make that work for the brand that you're you're getting hired for. Sometimes, and it's and like the brand would be don't I, don't talk about six I, feet. Talk about COVID. Don't give your brand coronavirus. Yeah, but you, know, you and I are kind of called reckless a little bit sometimes in, in, in meetings. I'm sure because because we would take an anti stance. Yeah, I agree with it though. I did. Have you? Did you? Either of you, but it's going to circle back. Hold have on. a company that you ever came in contact to that did not email you their plans and for the coronavirus? Why was oh, Hertz oh, rent a car right. that I rented ten years? Like, I don't care. Like, I don't need to know what Michael's uh, art store is well, going to do about. Let's be cool to Michael's. You know, I'm not I a fan Michael's. of. Jo- I'm not a but Joanne saying, guy anymore. But so. the idea is the same thing. It's like why. Why are you doing – like, why does this need a response? Why is it – because that takes money to send out those emails. Here's the answer. Because they don't know what message to put forth and they feel like they have to do something. Right. That's crisis communication meets, hey, this is actually another opportunity to be top of mind and look good. I, I thought about that a lot. Uh, why? Yeah, why is everybody sending me their terms and conditions, their privacy policy updated – uh, all in this last five, six month period, it's because we feel like we have to, and legally everybody wants, doesn't want to be, you know, an endless, uh, wallet. Or maybe, or maybe or curse. Some, some unnamed are being a little bit disingenuous and they're trying to act like they, they believe in you and care for you in ways where they don't. Exactly. And they're acting as this guardian that they've never acted as you before, right? Other than trying to sell you more insurance than you need for something or other rental cars. But I'm just, I find it very sad that very big marketing agencies all the way down to the in-house folks can't understand what the drivers are. And the drivers haven't changed, but not the drivers of the car, the drivers of, of what their, their brand is. Right. Back to those levers, pull the levers you know. Don't get me pulling these messages. Fear. Like fear. Better. Your fear. Like use fear. Fear is their number one, right? 
Well, you said, if you're missing out, that's what that's what you can uh, do for destination. Yeah, well, yeah. Right? You're so maxed Maybe out. Maybe keep fear out one of it. One thing I never understood was the closing of beaches when no one wanted to be closer than six foot than the next person on the beach ever. That one did. I didn't get that one. I would have used that. That that So that's where I would have used that as that anti message. If I was in the destination marketing and say I had something that had any relation to a beach or a pool, I would be using that as the message. Something that I don't know. Yeah. What, you where they be six away. feet apart well, anyway. So. Here's, here's one I'm surprised no one's used. Seashell distancing. <laughs> right? And I'm surprised no one's used that because it's just so flat on its face. Talk about beer missing out. A friend of mine is in the Cascades right now. He texted me this photo of him above the, the frost line, 7,000 feet on a beautiful lake. That would be the thing I would be fear of missing out right now is that experience. That is the only thing I fear missing out. That's the only thing I fear is not having that experience. Get back to the experience that makes people love you to begin with. Stop giving your own brand coronavirus. Oh, yeah. It's a good way to put it. Yeah. You're infecting your own brand. Yeah. I mean, that's just <laughs> doesn't have, it's very nice that it's a, a virus and it infects itself, but it could be anything but negative. But so we went we went macro to micro to come back and to give it kind of a button on this. It's all about being disingenuous, right? That's why I go broad, then I go small. I go big to small, man. Just want to show you where I was I was leading you. In this discussion, yeah, you really orchestrated that conversation. We talked I'm about sure. this before. We did a pre pro interview, yeah. You have a giant whiteboard behind it. you can't see it, but it's all pre. This is why I have the avocado you know exactly what you, what you'd say. What, what else is making you uh angry about about this this era, the the core era? Do I come across as angry? Uh, bottled up anger, but in a good way. Uh-oh. No, it's passion. It's passion. Okay. It's passion. <laughs> I've, I've, I've referred to it as that, too. I didn't sense anger. Passion. I can hear it in, in your I key drops. Anger. I can hear it. That was Charlie's Angels theme when they go to the commercial right there. Yeah. yeah. Now. Uh, so here's one right there. I got this today. You know. My favorite, Crate and Barrel. Crate and Barrel. The, the catalog, catalog, right? Catalog, okay. And, at, at what point are they going to realize, and I'm not just saying Crate and Barrel, pick up any any of these, which come by the dozens. Once you sign up for one thing, you get on every damn list known to man, right? This entire thing has one brand in it, Crate and Barrel. Yeah. Opportunity on a spread like this to show love for other brands with other brands. Hey, how about a little food? What what food is this? Oh, this is the so such and such a dish. What utensil is that? Oh, that's from, you know, uh, you could do so much more with this than just only do crate and barrel. And I would look at it differently than, and it's not just crate and barrel. This entire thing hasn't changed in 40 years. The catalog, the right. home catalog. Yeah. And I think there's an opportunity right now for to, you know, serve more than one master. That's actually. I that's, love that idea. That's a really astute kind of angle because. You know, print is not, it's not going to increase. And so you got to figure out how to cut costs and make cross promotion, maybe with like fresh market, something that's attainable for that audience. Same audience likes Crate and Barrel is uh, yup, yuppie white people that probably go, you know, fresh market or probably yeah. go load to- them groceries into a Tesla. You could draw a line through this demographic, this psychographic, into easily 12 other brands that would make sense, right, for to be in this. And the person reading this would be perfectly in sync with that offering. Yeah. You know? And it, I'm, it's not just me. And But I'll tell you what also, I look through it beginning to end every time just to look at it. And, they, well, I mean, they do need something new. It needs something that it's like to get excited about. I don't get excited about anything coming in the mail oh yeah yeah I like mean, it's just like most mail's garbage i'll right? look at it if it's in in my face and i from the walk from the mailbox to the garbage can and you, i'll check it out you but, can't not sign up for junk junk mail mail so it does separate itself if you're getting that but i've tried to un un uh undo myself from, from like what is it retail me not bought them out i believe like Valpack? Yeah, stuff like that. You can't get off junk mail because you don't know you're signing up for it for, you know, a Yahoo account. And it's like, oh, by the way. Or how about changing your address? 
Yeah. USPS yeah. really hoard themselves out there. And they're like, hey, guess what? You can get on 40 different well, things. I did those. I did the everyday or every sure. door direct mail. I didn't need anybody's permission to stuff a bunch of mailers in there and send it to every every house on the block. Like, you just pay for it. That's actually a good marketing, pragmatic marketing tip for anybody that has a local business. Eric did that with the dentistry that he owns, owned, yeah. was part of, let's say. Uh, we'll take that out for legal, that. We'll but um, time stamp it. Well, it's, it's just like NPR and Catholicism. It's very hard to quit because they keep sending you stuff. Both of them do. Yeah. And I'm like, damn, Win Dixie got some good sales going on. I might have to check out Dr. Check. That's just as good as Dr. Pepper. That's the same. <laughs> like I said, NPR and Catholicism, you go, yeah. Yeah. I, I yes, and. I didn't say I didn't, I didn't know how to get anywhere from there. Well, yeah, was, Ignatius was, Riley and Terry Gross are the I same did, person. I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't. I, Dr. Check pedophilia joke I thought was coming for sure. No, no, Dr. Check isn't. And, they hit them in New Orleans like uh, they do with all of the uh, Catholic priests. Phew. What? My dad won't be mad at me now. Anybody that needs that reference, go back to episodes like eight, eight episodes ago. Sam Tripoli talking conspiracy theorists. He, he, un- he undiscovered the Jesuits and how they're ruining the, the world, basically. I totally remember that whole interview. <laughs> so crazy. Word for word. I love that guy. But yeah. uh, so crazy. Um, well, we only have a couple minutes left. We always want to ask this question to every guest we have. And yep. we'll have you back on, obviously. There's much more to talk about. But uh, we try to keep it to about 33 minutes. Um, if you could go back in a time machine to your 13-year-old self, what would you ask yourself? What, I mean, what advice would you tell yourself? <laughs> what would you ask yourself? That's also a good question. Yeah, what advice? <laughs> yeah so you, can get, you, you get in a time machine, you can go back to a 13-year-old you, give yourself some advice, and then you're boop, you back. You only got a couple minutes. Um, you know, um, to paraphrase Stevie Nicks, you know, time makes you bolder, even children get older, to be more aware of the passage of time and more aware that anything you're doing right now, anything you're doing in any given moment is fleeting and there's a new opportunity the moment that passes. There's this permanence you feel when you're 13, like everything is going to last forever because up until that point in your life, everything has lasted forever. Right. So the quickly you get used to ephemera. Uh, and the rapid nature, rapid fire nature of existence, the better. You think your 13 year old self is going to listen to something that poetic? Oh, no. <laughs> so it, you're, so I, I, I'm playing you as 13. I don't know what you just said, but tell me again. How do I, how do I understand that a little bit? Better? You didn't throw that part into it. That I a 13 year old has to I know, understand but I know it he too. Can t- I know you can take it. I, I wouldn't ask this, the get the guest, this question, if I didn't know he couldn't answer it. Now What's up, boners? A, uh, listen. How would you uh, how would you get get it through them to like a, like a coach almost? Because that's how uh, I think. All right, I, I get you. Um, I would say, uh, be bolder, be faster, move quickly. There you go. Okay, that works. That's what you can take away. That's what everybody can remember. And then he would say, "Who the hell is Stevie Nicks?" And I would say, "Oh, that was I was gonna I was gonna put that in there, but I didn't want to. I didn't." Secretary Gross. In the future. Uh, you know, your age is a mystery, so I didn't want to ask, and I wasn't going to make fun of it uh, if he knew, if a 13 year old <laughs> you knew who Stevie Nicks was. So, oh, you know, definitely knew what Stevie Nicks Okay. Just, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> All right. <I> listen, man. <laughs> well, dude, hey, thanks for coming on. We'll have you on again, maybe in person next time. We'll, mer- we'll wear masks. And yeah. uh, the last thing I say on your podcast be I listen to Ram. Good. Yeah. Perfect. We've said worse, uh, much worse. This podcast we have. I'm an Andrew We're... Wrigley fan, by the way, so it's it works. Piece. Let me upgrade that to good. All right. <laughs> All right, buddy. All right. Thank you, Eric Law. We'll talk soon. Thank you, sir.